Kia ora koutou, it's fano. Welcome back to another special live version, 11 a.m. on, I'm going to guess Wednesday. Did I guess right, Craig? <laughs> Wednesday morning? That is right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's big hearing news, and uh, we do this occasionally because we can uh, when we have some sort of breaking news, some interesting news in the economy. And uh, Craig, unemployment numbers officially out. Uh, you found yourself a spot there in Stats, New Zealand. Um, I can see that media around the country is starting to report on it now. Unemployment yep. rate rises to 5.2%. I think economists previously were saying potentially 5.3%, so pretty closely to what was predicted. Uh, what's going on? Tell us what you've uh, found out and seen today. Essentially, um, unemployment has gone up again. Um, we saw that unemployment rose to 5.2%. Um, there are now 158,000 people in New Zealand um, who are now unemployed. Now, it didn't go up by as much as um, many people were expecting, at least the headline rate. But that's because when we look at the data, there are lots um, more people essentially working fewer hours. Um, and there is lots more um, uh, what we call underemployment in New Zealand. That suggests that there's a really weak labour market underneath that. But at a headline rate, the number of people unemployed in New Zealand has now gone up 28% since when this government took office. There doesn't appear to be any kind of plan to help those people. And just to give you some really you know, headline numbers, there are eight and a half million fewer hours being worked than there were when the government took office. Two and a half million fewer hours being worked this now than this time last year. When we look at pay, 51% of workers, according to the Labour Cost Index, got a pay rise less than inflation. They got a pay rise less than 2%. 64% got a pay rise less than 3.4. So less, less than 3%. So we can see there's a, you know, for many workers, not only are they having to do fewer hours, the hours that they're doing are increasingly not being paid at the same rate as the cost of living, which is why Many, many people are feeling that cost of living squeeze. Um, so when you say underemployment, that makes me think of the phrase we often hear out of America, which is the working poor. Uh, those who are underemployed, um, are they still surviving or is underemployment sort of some uh, no man's land between benefit and actually a salary that you can live off? Pretty much. So these are um, people who are in part time work, who want more hours and who can't get those hours. If we take the broader measure of uh, of labor market slack, what we call underutilization. So that's everybody who wants work but can't get it, including mm. people who want more more hours, can't get it. People who are outside of the labor force but would like a job still. Um, that broke the 400,000 barrier in New Zealand for the first time. Um, so that, that implies about 250,000 more people are employed but still aren't really earning enough to survive, live comfortably on top of that 158,000 unemployed, give or take? 158,000 people unemployed. Um, yeah. There's then a large number of people who are underemployed, want more work can, can't, but can't get it. Then there are some people who aren't in the labour force um, because they're not actively seeking work, but perhaps they, if if work was available, they would take it. And when we add all of those numbers together, we right. get to 400,000 for the first time. We saw so the that, number that, of... That third category is not necessarily like a retired person. It's someone no. who's who's not working. Who's, I'm thinking like an at-home mum or something like yep. that. Not working, uh, not in uh, not un, in the unemployment figures. But like if the if the job was there that fitted in with what how they need to operate, they would take it. So they're not, not looking for work. They're not actively looking for work, but they are available for work should they be able to find something that fits in with what they're doing that's sort that, of what we're talking that's, 
That's absolutely right. You're looking okay. at people who are um, discouraged workers often. They may have given up on finding a job because they've been hunting for so long. Um, what we also see is that this isn't just a, um, a Wellington-based problem. Um, employment fell in nine out of 12 regions of the country. Mm. Um, the number of people employed in Auckland fell 23,100 from this time last year. Um, and when we look at, you know, the downturn is particularly pronounced for young people. Um, there are 15,000 fewer 15 to 24 year olds in employment than this time last year. Um, Mardi unemployment is now 10%. Pacific People's unemployment is 12.1%. So the weakness just below that headline rate is really pronounced. So it sounds like what you're saying is uh, beyond the actual number of 5.2, the typical vulnerable communities are becoming even more vulnerable than that. And that's this is what we see when we start to see labour markets turn really bad. These yeah. are the leading indicators of this because these are the people who get fired first. And right. as a consequence, you're starting to see that young people go. Mardi, Pacifica, because they're often the last into work, which means they're often the first out of work yeah. on the other side. Um, we saw public sector wages actually fall this quarter. Um, so the effects of the government's cuts are now being seen in public sector wages. Um, it fell for the first time uh, at its fastest rate since um, 2018. Um, so, again, when we look at the data below that headline rate, the headline rate's doing an awful lot of heavy lifting yeah. because the rest of the data is telling us there's some some real weaknesses in that set. Um, so you said up 28% under uh, Christopher Luxon as our Prime Minister. What, in your opinion, are the reasons it's up by nearly a third under this government? Um, there's a few reasons. The first one of which is if you cancel a whole bunch of investments, if you make a whole bunch of cuts, if you suck all the confidence out of the economy, unsurprisingly, businesses won't invest. If businesses don't invest, we then don't see jobs. Um, uh, this is what essentially is it's what we've done. Um, the uh, the government has decided that it wants, it, it, you know, these people who are losing their jobs are essentially disposable in terms of um, their ability to um, to 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 get uh, inflation down, and as a consequence, um, to get interest rates down. Um, what we're continuing to see now, of course, is that uh, we expect weak GDP data in the next quarter. Um, it might well turn negative in the next quarter, with rising unemployment. It's really easy to suck the the confidence out of the economy. It's really hard to bring it back. And right. this is what we're seeing, is that there's no plan to help get people into work. There's no plan for investments. And so, therefore, we're continuing to see job losses. Um, I'm interested as well. I'm just playing with my calculator here while we're talking. Uh, Craig, you said that there are 8.5 million fewer hours being worked. Uh, that's around 35,000 if you take out four weeks annual leave. That's around 35,000 fewer hours per day. Um, five days a week over 48 weeks. Um, this is a government who has told us they're all about productivity, yet <laughs> we're down 8.5 million. <laughs> you know, last year was telling. Uh, down 8.5 million hours worked. Uh, where is the uh, disparity between what they're saying? We are a government of productivity. Everything's about making you know, more productive and us losing 35,000 hours per day of productivity. Well, I mean, you know, it's that classic problem in politics. Don't listen to what someone says. Look at what they do. Um, the Minister for Social Development a couple of weeks ago put out a, a statement saying the jobs are coming. Well, this data shows us the jobs aren't coming. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the quarterly employment survey showed that there are 34,600 fewer filled jobs than when the government took office. So... You know, so that there's not the jobs, there's not the hours. The productivity problem we have in this country isn't made any better mm. by stopping the investments that would allow productivity to 
you know, to, to take place, to, to happen. If you cut spending on, for example, the Cook Strait ferries, it now yeah. gets harder to get things between the two islands. As a consequence, productivity falls because you've got more friction in the economy. If you're stopping, um, if you're stopping, if you're putting up the cost of tuition fees by 6% this year, as you did 6% last year that makes it harder to get the skills to get into the next job if you halve the support for the apprenticeship boost program again it makes it harder to find the tradies so that when construction work does happen you've actually got the skilled workforce to deliver mm. it what we're seeing here in this data is that is that many people are essentially taking fewer hours they're taking lower pay increases just to stay in a job because their fear is that once they're out of a job, it will be incredibly hard to get back into another one. And that's why that headline rate is yeah. not moving as much as the rest of the labor market is moving. Yeah. You said something about there about cancelling ferries. I'm not I'm not too sure what you're talking about. Let me just stretch. <laughs> just got to stretch. Just, oh, just in case. <laughs> I've got to stretch there a little bit. Um so I remember talking to you and you basically saying something along the lines of anything over four or four and a half percent is choices by this government. But what you're actually saying now is this is that 5.2 percent. But actually delving into the numbers, uh, it's, I'll use the word, exponentially worse when you look at the underemployed, when you look at what it is for Māori Pacifica, for youth, when you look at what it is for uh, those people who would, would work but aren't actively seeking jobs. It's a whole lot worse than that. Absolutely. What we're seeing essentially is that that veneer of the, uh, provided by that number makes it appear as if the data is, um, you know, much more um, uh, 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 quiet and less and less difficult in the labour market. When we get underneath that data, we can see young people being particularly affected. When yeah. you've got unemployment rates of twice or nearly three times the rate for Mardi and Pacifica. That means you've got real pockets and real communities where, you know, one in 10, one in, you know, 50 people are are unemployed. That means every community has people who are now, you know, big pockets of people who are unemployed. When we mm -hmm. see underemployment continuing to rise and underutilization rise to, you know, that new historic high, it means there are plenty of people who are experiencing what we call in the trade wage scarring which means that they're cutting their wages, which has long-term impacts on them and their earning potential in the future in order just to stay in work. And yeah. you can't keep doing that um, without eventually that unemployment rate starting to catch up. And yeah. what we might be seeing in the next couple of quarters is that unemployment rate starting to catch up with the reality, which is provided by the data underneath. Um. I kind of feel like this question is, you know, when you when couples have a baby and straight after they've had a baby, people start going, oh, you're going to have another one? Are you going to have another <laughs> one? I kind of feel a bit, this is a question's mm. a bit like that because I'm like, where to from here? And it's literally the day we've just found out. But so what happens next? Like, um, you know, you follow these obviously closer than almost anyone in the country. What happens next? What do we expect to see over the, let's say in this quarter or the next quarter uh, from where we are right now? Well, the, the, the challenges will come when if the GDP numbers come in much weaker than expected. So if we if we see a negative number with the next set of GDP numbers, businesses will start to go, hang on a second. They're already not investing. That will signal to them to not invest further. Yeah, that will see, um, you know, um, the amount we're relying entirely almost on our exports to help deliver our economic growth. That's going to be enormously challenged by Trump's tariffs, not just the direct effect on New Zealand, but the indirect effect of uh, Trump's tariffs in other jurisdictions, slowing economic growth. Um, that means we're then reliant upon our agricultural exports to deliver that growth. And again, we become an economy much like 2015, where we sell milk um, and uh, to you know around the world we rely upon rising house prices to make us all feel wealthier and we cross mm. our fingers that there's some there's some growth somewhere from somewhere else um what what we're what we don't have is any form of support from the government in terms of investments that would help us right now in terms of economic growth but would also help us with um, uh, um, delivering the the assets that we need so that when growth does occur it doesn't just turn back up as inflation because that's the risk here. We we don't invest. 
when growth does return, we can't control, we, we can't manage that growth well because we haven't built the things we need and we just see prices rising again. That, that could be um, kind order houses, that could be, you know, production on, on, on roads, actually infrastructure uh, to keep those 17,000 tradies oh. in the country rather than uh, off to uh, the GC in Australia. Yeah. 16,600 fewer workers in construction than this time two years ago. Right. Yeah. We, you know, and we all know where they are. They're in Australia. Um, uh, um, we've seen, you know, work in hospitality and retail and professional and science and technical areas. They've all fallen over the past two years. Um, it builds on itself. And that lack of confidence becomes a problem that you need to break. That's the job of the government. Yeah. It, it should invest counter cyclically and and there's never been a better time to invest than when the economy is really in the doldrums because you'll never find cheaper bits of investment yeah one, what yeah. we're seeing one, what we're seeing we here again in the housing market all those tradies aren't available for kind order because they're building places on paratai drive or at fungamata or in maori hill or you know in in parts of the south island and then they, yeah, their rates go up because they're more um What's the word? They're more desirable. They're more. They're busier. They've got more work to absolutely. do. Absolutely, absolutely. And as a consequence, well, just the capacity. You want to build things. It doesn't matter who's building it. If you're asking them to build more, and you don't have the skilled work, yeah, you're creating that problem. The real challenge yeah. here in New Zealand is that we end up um, repeating that cycle, which we've done for more than a decade of underinvesting when we can to be able to see the benefits when we when we can deliver those benefits. Right now, where you know we've got a um, the deputy prime minister is talking about further rounds of cuts at the next budget. If we see that a tide um, with a downturn in the economy, with rising unemployment, all of the engines of growth are being switched off, and that's the risk that's in front of us. Yeah. All right, Craig. Um, do you have any understanding or knowledge or belief or I don't know what the right word is? What's happening tomorrow on your podcast? What should we tell the people about that now before we head off? Um, I'll be taught I'll be taking the unemployment numbers apart further so everyone will be able to see what's really happening in terms of that data. Um, and we'll be in you know, you'll get a, a really thorough understanding of what's going on and in particular where to from here to answer your point, Pat, about what happens next and what are the scenarios that um, you know, if the event, you know, what will that mean for New Zealand? All right. So I guess I'm talking to you later on today and that podcast yes. is coming out tomorrow. And other than that, um, thanks for jumping in live with these, pr probably, to be honest, the first media outlet to talk about this live in New Zealand, uh, the new unemployment figures for today, which to remind people, 5.2% uh, from the last quarter. All right, Craig, be safe, hey, be well, and we'll talk you. to you soon. Thanks.